Kinetic energy is the type of energy something has when it's moving. You may remember in a previous video on stopping distances, I told you about the difference between how thinking distance changes with increasing speed and braking distance changes with increasing speed. And I said there's this interesting point that if you uh, increase speed from 20 to 40, you double it, you double thinking distance, but you more than double the braking distance. So thinking distance increases linearly with speed, but braking distance increases in this curve relationship there. And that's because of the kinetic energy equation there. Kinetic energy is proportional to mass, it is in words as well, and it's also proportional to velocity squared. So whereas if we double speed from 20 to 40, we double thinking distance, because that's just the car still traveling at the same speed. Here we're actually dissipating kinetic energy. So if we double speed, we actually increase the energy by four times, by two squared. So that's why it increases, the braking distance increases by four times as well. Very interesting. So we're going to apply this equation now to an interesting situation, situation to do with sports. And we're going to consider which one would we rather get hit by the tennis ball or the cricket ball. Have a little think, go on, have a little bet with yourself or with whoever you're watching this with. Which one would you rather get hit? So I've gone and found out the mass and the velocities uh, for some typical situations with the two balls. The mass of the tennis ball, 0 0.059, and this velocity is 30 meters per second. That's off a forehand, a normal shot in tennis. Cricket ball, higher mass, 0 0.16 kilograms. Velocity from a bowler's arm is going to be about 80 miles per hour, about 40 meters per second. So let's practice using our equations. Um, we're going to use our equation for kinetic energy. So just copy down the term we want to calculate. EK is a half times mass. 0 0.059 times 30, the velocity squared. Okay, reach for the calculator. I wouldn't try and attempt to do that in my head. 0 0.5 times 0 0.059 times 30 squared. So that is 26.6 joules. Okay, to three six figs. Okay, not too bad, not too much kinetic energy there. The cricket ball, how much kinetic energy does it have? EK is a half times by the mass, 0 0.16 times 40 squared. Okay, again, go for the calculator. 0 0.5, that's the half times 0 0.16 times 40 squared. Whoa, way, whoa, loads more, 128 joules. In this situation, I'd much rather get the tennis ball forehand. Um, thank you very much. Let's consider another situation though, because actually this is not, the forehand is not the fastest shot in tennis. The fastest shot is going to be of a serve. And serves in tennis, can be anything up to about uh, 150 miles an hour, pretty fast. So let's calculate the kinetic energy for the tennis serve. Remember the cricket ball was 128 joules off the, um, off the, the bowler. So a half times by the mass 0 0.059 times 75 squared. How much kinetic energy is that? Uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.059 times 75 squared. 160, 166, basically, to three significant figures. 166 joules. Actually, in this situation, I'd rather have the bowler bowl at me with the cricket ball rather than the tennis player 
aim at a serve straight at me. So it's always the energy, the kinetic energy that does the damage is um, something that I've mentioned quite often. Let's move off from the tennis balls then and talk about, well, this is probably one of the harder, uh, the hardest equation to rearrange in GCSE physics. Um, and there's two ways to work with this equation. You can either, if you, that's if you want to calculate speed, and it's often a question they ask you in one of the harder parts. There's two ways you can work. You can either input the numbers that you know, so if you know kinetic energy and mass, and just work for the, from the inverse of operations until you get V, until you get the speed, or you can actually just remember the rearranged form. And I'm going to go through the rearranging now. Uh, I suggest you just remember the rearrange form for V equals that we reach at the end. Now, when you rearrange something complicated like this, use the inverse of operations. Now, if you remember, your maths teacher will have told you you always do maths in a certain way. You always do brackets, then indices, then division, then multiplication, then addition, then subtraction. Bid maths. Now, if you're rearranging things, you're working backwards. You're doing the inverse. So you do samdib. All right, Sam did. So first of all, subtractions. Don't have any subtractions to move, so leave that. Then additions. Don't have any additions to move, so leave that. Multiplications. Yes, we do. We have got, firstly, uh, times a half. So move that. Times a half becomes divide by a half. Divide by a half is the same as times two. So my first new line is going to be 2EK, two, 2 kinetic energy, is equal to MV squared. OK, we've got some more multiplication to move, so let's do that next. We've got the M. Times by M becomes divide by M. It's getting a bit easier now. OK, so our next line of algebra becomes, whoopsie daisies, becomes 2ek over m equals v squared. And we've just got one more little bit to do because we don't want v to calculate v squared, we want to calculate v. And the next thing, we haven't got any divisions, so the next thing to do is indices in SAMDIB. Um, the inverse of squared is the square root. So v equals the square root of 2ek over m. So the root of all of that. So that's what I suggest. Rather than doing all of that complicated stuff in an exam, I suggest you just actually remember the rearranged form for v equals. OK, so this is where the the questions they ask you get a bit complicated. I'd like to ask you about an object, maybe an object that's falling. So I've raised this cricket ball up and I've given it some gravitational potential energy. I'm going to let it drop and the question might ask me, what speed would it hit the ground if we ignore air resistance or any other external forces? Well, OK. Well, that means that what we're saying is that all of the gravitational potential energy it had at the start is going to be converted to kinetic energy when it finally hits the ground. So the first thing to do is to work out the gravitational potential energy it has. And the equation for gravitational potential energy is mass times gravitational field strength times height. So let's do that quickly. Mass of the cricket ball was 0 0.16 kilograms. Gravitational field strength is always 10 on Earth. And the height we've raised it, as you can see, is 2 meters. So let's go with the calculator again. 0 0.16 times 10 times 2 equals 3.2. So we have 3.2 joules of gravitational potential energy. Now we're saying that all of the gravitational potential is converted into kinetic energy if we ignore 
air resistance and other forces. So that means that 3.2 is our, our kinetic energy, 3.2 joules. Now we know everything in this equation here. So V equals the root of 2 times 3.2 divided by the mass, hasn't changed, 0 0.16 kilograms. Okay, go for the calculator. Just remembering that we have to square root all of that. So we have to do all the stuff in the fraction first. So 2 times 3.2 equals 6.4 divided by 1 point, 0 0.16 equals and then square root that so the speed v is 6.32 okay to three significant figures and the unit meters per second all right that's about as tough as it gets really kinetic energy we're going to move on to comparing kinetic energy with momentum in the next video